Okay, so I have shown you an example of getting a venipuncture from a client. Um, started out with ate it. Didn't quite repeat that when I came back. And then before you leave your client, you want to do your four P's. Make sure they have their push buttons, whether that be their call light, remote, TV remote, or um, their PCA of some sort. So even with mannequins, you need to be working with gloves and treat them just like they are a real patient. But for the purpose of demonstration, you may not have seen the equipment that I use. So I wanna make sure that you understand how to use this, how to put it together. So again, like I said in the podcast, your gauze package has two gauze in it. And if you notice, with the first stick, I didn't separate my gauze out, which I usually do. I separate those out so you can have a clean one after they reach hemostasis. And always make sure you have your supplies right there in reach. And again, like I said in the podcast, these side rails and bedside tables, other people have been up against them. So make sure that you don't put tape on anything dirty. Since I just donned these gloves, then they're clean. Now, the difference between a butterfly and a straight needle. So this is a straight needle. This is a 21 gauge straight needle. And you can usually tell what gauge your needles are by color. And then this is a 23 gauge butterfly needle. Some places they already come put together, so there's nothing to assemble. And then in other places like the skills lab, you're going to have to assemble that. So cover goes over the bevel, so you know this side is the patient side, okay, because we don't need a bevel. These are covered with a little uh, rubber, and underneath that rubber is a needle, see. So be careful with that. It is a sharp hazard. So you just screw that in like that. Now I like to have the tubes I need to draw. And this will be in the phlebotomy tray for you to reference even during the practicum, okay? What you will have is you will have orders. On the back side of this card, an alphabetical order tells you what color tube that test is. So you would Get your tubes ready and then you would see, okay, what order do I need to draw those in? So your blue top is first. I say rarely do you ever draw blood cultures. So we have our blue top. So this, my first one, I would just sit in there. Now remember when I said when you draw with a butterfly, you have to waste that air that's in that tubing when it comes to anything with a liquid additive because you got to have the right mix of, of additive to blood. Okay, and then um, if the doctor had an order for a CBC, then that's a purple top, and I know that that would come second. And then just for the mannequins and in the hospital setting, you can use alcohol pads, just a regular alcohol pad. Like I said in the podcast, you want to do 30 second scrub, scrub. So if you wanted to do more, then you could. But at least 30 seconds, and I like to do circles for about 10 seconds. Kind of look at that alcohol pad. I just usually, you can flip it over or get a new one and then do some horizontals. And I like to do um, out about two inches from the location of where I'm going to poke the patient. And then some verticals. So whatever method you use is up to you. <laughs> The main thing is, is you're not going to touch that site after you've cleaned it. 
So be careful when putting your tourniquet on that you don't contaminate the site that you just cleaned. If so, just clean it again. I didn't touch it, I just I put my hand over it. I say in older people, I like to put the tourniquet on top of their gown so that it's not pinching the skin or pulling hairs. And you're just doing a little tuck. Got a purple top. Um, whatever you drop on the floor will be there when you're done. Remember that we don't isolate our shoes when we're going in and out of contact isolation rooms. So we do tend to track C. diff and those kind of things. So pull your needle away. Whenever we go in, we're going in bevel up and you're going straight into that vein. So you need to come over here and I always keep my hands on top so I don't get too sharp of an angle. You're going to put your thumb here and pull tight, okay? On a real human being, you really need to do that. On this guy, not so much. And then you're just going straight in, about 10 to 15 degrees. When you feel that um, resistance and then lack of resistance, you know that you're in the vein. And this guy's veins aren't running straight. You wouldn't do that on a real person. Okay, so I'm holding tight. Since I replumbed these, they're not perfect. So when you feel that resistance and then lack of resistance, you can put your tube down. Some people tend to like to use the butterfly because they get that um, instant gratification that they can see the uh, return. So once you start getting your blood, you're going to stabilize, keep this stabilized with your dominant hand. Come up here and release your tourniquet. You have to pull this tube off that rubber covered needle on the inside of that. Get your gauze. And then you're not going to apply pressure until the needle is out of the skin. And I just kind of do a rollover method. So take your needle out and just roll over and hold pressure. Now you can activate the sharp um, cover one-handed. Ideally, you want to you don't want to take a chance on sticking your other hand. So at the institution you're at for the ABSNs. This is one piece at that hospital. So the whole thing would go into the sharps. So you're applying pressure, and then you check for hemostasis, no bleeding, then you can put the clean one on, and then apply your tape. So if you choose a vein that is not visible whenever the tourniquet's on, so if it's not above the skin to where you can see it, then I'm going to take this tape off. He's not. Come on. Okay. Before you clean it, what you can do is mark it. On a real person this works better. So you can take the cap that was on the rubber side of the needle and just kind of put that down and rock it around. On a real person this will give you a red circle so you'll know that if you hit within the middle of that red circle you'll be fine. Another thing is you want to do that when you're holding tension because otherwise your skin that you marked won't be in the right place. So hold your tension, mark your vein. This is a little uncomfortable on a real person, so just kind of say, I'm just a little bit of pressure, and then you have it marked. When you release the skin, it's going to be in a different spot, but when you get ready to actually stick and you hold your tension and you put your needle in, then it'll be in the right place.
the butterfly. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to apply the butterfly. Again, the butterfly is meant more for hand veins, veins that are small, children that actually have to have venipuncture. Oh. Well, that's not the right kind. That would be the kind you use with a syringe. Not sure where those came from. Probably donated. Okay. So this is the one that I need. So you have a rubber end. Now these will, you can get rid of this rubber part if you need just a syringe and butterfly. But you have to have that rubber part for the actual vacutainer holder. So again, we're going to put our tourniquet three to four, and I cross it over, then bring tension, and then tuck it. There are other methods of doing that if you just don't get it that I can show you in the skill slot. So again, alcohol prep, scrub, 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 30 seconds. Now remember, with something that has a liquid additive, which this does not, then you have to waste that air. So if we're doing blue tops, this one's probably no good. It doesn't have its additive anymore, but we'll pretend it's still in there. Um, you have to do that waste. So raise your cover up. Remember, cover up is bevel up. And with the butterfly, you're just kind of using the little wings, bring them together to manipulate the needle better. So put your waste tube in because you have to get rid of that air. Otherwise, your specimen is short that amount of blood. Okay, so this is where I prepped. Okay, so I'm going to maintain support of my needle with my dominant hand. And then with my non-dominant hand, I can hold the, change out the tubes. And I don't think these have, this one has any vacuum. So we'll see that it's primed. So there's no air left in the tubing and that one is trash. Because you want to get rid of all that air from the tubing. And then we'll put the new one in. Again, you're maintaining that needle with your dominant hand and using your non-dominant hand to change out the tubes. When you're holding tension, you're always doing it below the path of the needle. Always pull this off before you remove the needle and make sure you always drop the tourniquet before you remove the needle. I'm going to pretend that's a new gauze. So we're just going to release that. And you always want to keep your, your fingers away from the sharp. And then you can press it down. These are designed to be one-handed activator. So on your tubes, you usually have a rock time to help mix the blood with the additives. And this card also shows you how many times you're supposed to rock this. So while you're holding pressure, you can rock your tube. This one is supposed to be eight to 10 times. And you have to get enough blood in these. And there's a line that's a fill line, a little black notch at the top. Okay. And, you know, they get jostled quite a bit when they're going down to the lab. Okay, we're going to say we got hemostasis. And apply your tape. 
well. In the hospital setting, this whole thing goes in the trash, but for the purpose of practicing on these mannequins, then you can reuse these. And on the straight needle, I like to go in um, because it depends on the angle. So when you're going in at a 15 degree angle, if you're doing this like a dart, you're going to have more than 15 degrees on that angle. So fingers on top like this, and then you can rest your hand on the arm to keep it stabilized. And you can reach underneath to change out your tubes with your non-dominant hand. And I think those are about all the pointers that I can think of at the, off the top of my head. You do not draw blood on children in the hospital setting. And we will see you in the lab tomorrow. Be sure and be hydrated. Make sure your extremities are warm. Wear long sleeves that can be pushed up high enough above the antecubital fossa. And always clean up your mess.